Humanity has always been captivated by the mysteries of the cosmos. The night sky has perpetually sparked our curiosity, making us dream of exploring distant worlds. Films like Interstellar have painted vivid pictures of what might be achievable through wormholes, hyperdrives, time dilation, and suspended animation. Yet while these narratives fuel our imagination, the reality is that traveling to other stars remains an unachievable dream, with the necessary technology still firmly in the realm of speculation. Take Proxima Centauri, our nearest star neighbor, which is an astonishing 266,000 times farther from us than the sun. To visualize this, it's 103 million times the distance to the moon. Light itself, traveling at the ultimate speed limit, takes 4.3 years to journey from Proxima Centauri to Earth. Nevertheless, we cling to the hope that our technological barriers are just temporary. When we gaze at the night sky, the mind-boggling distances between stars remind us of the dawning challenges we face. The truth is, interstellar travel will remain beyond our reach. But if you remain unconvinced, join me in pondering the possibilities of interstellar travel. Enrico Fermi famously asked, where is everybody? Why, despite the billions of potentially habitable planets, have we not encountered any signs of intelligent extraterrestrial life? It's hard to believe we're alone in the universe. So what explains this silence? Are we truly the first to leap over significant evolutionary barriers? Many explanations have been suggested for the Fermi paradox. From the idea that advanced civilizations might self-destruct to the notion that intelligent life is incredibly rare. However, the simplest answer might be staring us in the face. The colossal distances between stars could be an insurmountable barrier, even for the most sophisticated civilizations. The energy and resources needed to transport living beings across these vast stretches of space might be so enormous that it's simply not worth the effort for any civilization, regardless of their technological prowess. Before we explore the potential of traversing the immense distances between star systems, let's first ponder a fundamental question. Are we destined to forever remain confined within our solar system, bound by the gravitational constraints of our celestial home? To investigate this, let's embark on a thought experiment. Imagine our goal is to design a viable crewed interstellar mission. Our objective is to send a starship to Proxima Centauri, aiming for a journey that spans generations while ensuring the crew's safety. The starship will employ a propulsion system capable of reaching 20% of the speed of light. However, a critical challenge emerges. At such velocities, even minute specks of space dust pose a severe risk. For instance, a dust grain just one millimeter in diameter could deliver millions of joules of energy upon impact, potentially vaporizing the ship instantly. Given this peril, the prospect of safely departing our solar system seems remote. The remnants of planetary formation have left behind significant debris, significantly heightening the probability of collisions. Nevertheless, as we venture farther from the sun, the density of these microscopic meteoroids decreases. One strategy might involve launching vertically to evade the dense debris within Earth's orbit and employing Earth-based lasers to clear a navigable path ahead. Next, our journey would take us toward Proxima Centauri to see how far we can travel without encountering destruction. To grasp this, let's delve into the characteristics of the interstellar medium. It consists of 99% gas by mass and 1% tiny dust grains. The gas is predominantly 90% hydrogen with helium and trace amounts of heavier elements making up the remainder. In the Milky Way's disk, the average gas density is approximately one atom per cubic centimeter. However, our sun resides in a less dense area known as the local bubble, likely shaped by a previous supernova, where the density drops to about one atom per 10 cubic centimeters. Space dust primarily comprises silicate and carbonaceous molecules that have agglomerated into grains. These particles originate in the cores of massive stars and are expelled during supernovae or stellar winds. Typically, these grains range in size from a tenth to a few tenths of a micrometer in diameter. Larger grains are exceedingly rare outside planetary systems, minimizing the risk of a single grain causing catastrophic damage to our spacecraft. In interstellar space, atoms, molecules, and dust grains come together to form larger structures. Most dust grains range from a tenth to a few tenths of a micrometer in size. Larger grains are exceptionally rare outside of planetary systems. 
making the chance of a single grain destroying a spacecraft negligible. Smaller grains are sparse, with approximately one grain per 100 cubic meters of volume. Despite the diffuse nature of gas and dust in interstellar space, a spacecraft will encounter a significant amount of this material due to the vast distances involved. However, individual impacts are unlikely to pose a threat to the vessel. To illustrate, consider how satellites or meteoroids behave upon entering Earth's atmosphere. Upon entry, they immediately begin to heat up in the upper layers where air density is a millionth of that at sea level. Traveling at several to several tens of kilometers per second, these objects collide with air molecules, transferring enormous kinetic energy that often results in their destruction before reaching the ground. In contrast, Interstellar space is far less dense than Earth's upper atmosphere, approximately by a factor of 10 circumflex 16. However, a spacecraft traveling at zero, 2C, or 20% of the speed of light, moves approximately 10,000 times faster than a re-entering low Earth orbit satellite. As a result, the kinetic energy transferred by each particle impact is vastly diminished compared to atmospheric re-entry, reduced by about a billion times. With sufficient shielding and effective heat dissipation, the spacecraft may withstand this bombardment. Yet a new challenge emerges. At such extreme velocities, even a single impact from an atom or molecule can potentially cause damage. The cumulative effect of numerous minor impacts must be carefully evaluated. In a 2016 study led by Thiem Hoang and his team, the effects of individual particle impacts during high-speed interstellar travel were investigated. Their findings indicated that lighter elements, such as hydrogen and helium, primarily deposit heat and do not typically cause lasting damage. However, heavier elements like oxygen and iron can leave permanent marks on the spacecraft. In fact, Huang's calculations revealed that traveling to Proxima Centauri at 20% of the speed of light would result in the complete vaporization of the ship's forward hull, an impactful realization. In a 2006 study, Oleg Semyonov investigated the radiation exposure that an inadequately shielded crew would face at relativistic speeds. His findings revealed that these radiation levels would be comparable to those found in the core of a nuclear reactor, levels that would prove instantly lethal to any living organisms on board. Therefore, it's unequivocal that high-speed interstellar travel presents significant challenges in safeguarding both the spacecraft and its crew from intense impacts in radiation. This poses a formidable engineering challenge that must be overcome before embarking on such a journey. Looking beyond our theoretical exploration, there are several crucial considerations to ponder. If we were to undertake such an endeavor in 2024, numerous factors would require careful assessment. Firstly, Proxima Centauri is located approximately 4.3 light years away. Even utilizing the fastest technology available, Similar to that used by the Parker Solar Probe, a generation starship would need around 7,197 years to reach our closest neighboring star. This entails a journey spanning roughly 100 generations, with the initial crew and their descendants living and dying en route, and subsequent generations being born into a journey they did not choose. The concept of a generation starship raises profound ethical questions. Would it be possible to find volunteers willing to commit not just their own lives, but those of their descendants to a mission whose outcome they would never witness? The allure of pioneering new frontiers, similar to the fascination with Mars colonization, suggests that humans may indeed be willing to embark on one-way journeys. This might inspire volunteers for such a daring odyssey. Upon arriving at the Alpha Centauri system, the astronauts would confront two potential realities. In one scenario, they might discover that the planets are inhospitable to life as we know it, underscoring the unpredictability of cosmic exploration. Alternatively, they might find that humanity has already reached and colonized these distant worlds, leveraging technological advancements developed on Earth during their lengthy voyage. How close are we to becoming a spacefaring civilization? When we contemplate the vast scale of the Milky Way, spanning 100,000 light years, we begin to comprehend the immense challenge of interstellar travel. Breaking it down, there are approximately 20,000 potential destinations across the galaxy, each separated by about five light years. If we were to journey to each of these points, our fastest probe today would require an astonishing 169 million years 
to traverse the galaxy just once without stopping for exploration or altering its course. This staggering figure underscores the monumental difficulty of interstellar travel. The vast distances between stars and galaxies emphasize the necessity for groundbreaking advancements in propulsion technology, energy generation, and our comprehension of space-time. To evolve into a space-faring civilization, we must leap forward in innovation and imagination to span the cosmic voids between stars. Yet, there is reason for optimism. NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory simulations propose that generational ships traveling at speeds up to 500 kilometers per s could potentially colonize significant portions of the galaxy in approximately 90 million. Thanks for watching.